Welcome to night number 41 of History Bedtime Stories. We're in bed in our pajamas. I love snacks. I love snacks so much. I love the fridge. I love the kitchen. I love snacks in bed. I love snacks on the couch. And so I feel a certain kinship with Ebenezer Hurd Rogers, who may be Detroit's biggest eater in our whole history. He is um, a lawyer and a teacher. He's born in 1815, passes away in 1885. And although he's not born in Michigan, he comes here in 1838 following a brother who had successfully opened a grocery store here in town. When Ebenezer comes to town, he's working as a teacher. He's fairly well respected as a Latin scholar and a teacher. In fact, he has um, Thomas Palmer who goes on to become uh, a senator as an early pupil, but he goes into law. And as a lawyer, he is unexceptional. He takes kind of cases for money, not for fame. He is um, a little bit unreputable, but the real reason nobody likes him is he's just got the world's worst personality. He's mean, he's boisterous, he's a womanizer, he's difficult to deal with, he's cantankerous. He once got into a fight with three separate lawyers on the same day. And I'm not talking like a verbal fight, I'm talking fisticuffs. He is um, really stuck with this bad attitude. And to make it worse, he is described in um, Robert Bud Ross's 1907 tome, the early bench and bar of Detroit covering 1805 to the end of 1850 as being five foot 11, skinny with a high forehead and brown hair, blue eyes, wide mouth, generally upkempt, unkempt and shabby. He is described as mean, sordid, advantageous and preposterous. He is a little bit risque and that he describes himself as a street connoisseur of female beauty and has a bit of a reputation for being creepy. He will actually follow good looking women on the street all the way to their homes trying to figure out where they live. He is not great at hygiene. Now that's saying something in the 1800s when the average American man showered or bathed less than once a week. He is just smelly. In fact, residents of his apartment building often complain to the landlord about the stench that follows Ebenezer around. But on top of all of this, he loves a buffet. He loves to eat, he loves snacks. And the practice of the time was for taverns and saloons to offer free food. That might be a pot of oysters, that might be a kettle of stew, some sort of sandwiches or roast meat. And that buffet was a loss leader to get people to come in for lunch, eat for free, and then pay for lots and lots of drinks. Well, good old Ebenezer knew every buffet in town. He visited all of them and he had his favorites. He was really considered a um, drudge on these tavern owners because when he came in, you knew you were gonna have no food left when he left and he was gonna eat everything. In fact, even his friends and social acquaintances got really sick of this guy. He was um, introduced and knew Governor Woodbridge and he would go calling on Woodbridge, often because Woodbridge was reported to have a great kitchen, a great cook and good food. Well, Woodbridge would pretty much pretend he wasn't home when Ebenezer showed up. So Ebenezer would go around back into his orchard, pick berries off the bushes, fruit off the trees, turn his umbrella upside down, use it like a bucket, fill it with all of this stolen produce from uh, Woodbridge's house, and then walk down the street, umbrella bulging with all of his stolen loot. On New Year's Day of 1885, he picks his buffet of choice. He goes to Rice's Hotel and he eats for hours. Eventually he goes home and passes away peacefully in his sleep at the age of 70. His official cause of death, congestion of the stomach. He ate himself to death. If you've been enjoying these videos, give us a like and a share. And if you tag two friends in the comment section below, we'll enter you into a raffle to win some cool Detroit vinyl stickers that we'll mail out next week. Wash your hands.